crate training is wildly misunderstood. So in this video, I'm going to share the five steps that have helped me crate train dozens and dozens and dozens of puppies, including my new foster puppy, Marla. We spend a lot of time with new puppies, or even if you bring an adult dog home that's a rescue, having fun in and around the crate. We want to make the crate feel safe, but also fun and exciting. And the way that I do that, one way, is to play games in and around the crate. This is just a simple brain puzzle game. You saw Marlo working with us earlier. And simply what I do is I take some treats that we love. Um, these are freaking fantastic. It's a novel protein. Now, if your puppy's still scared to go in, you could put it outside the crate. And then I don't pressure, I don't force, and I leave the side door open in the beginning. So then there's no feelings of confinement or stress, or at least less feelings of that. And I'll just kind of wait around the crate for my puppy to choose to go in on their own, not me forcing them in. And then when they go in, they'll interact in this case with this puzzle, which is going to give them positive reinforcement. If your puppy is teething and you want some natural chews or dental chews or teething chews, what I'll do is supervised, of course, I'll give them their chews, especially if it's high value for them, in or around the crate. This is where happy, good things happen. I will feed them their meals in and around the crate. Again, in the beginning, I might just have the food right outside of the crate, but over time, I'll hand feed them in the crate or I'll give them a West Paw topple or a slow feeder so that what they're doing is, in this case, she's getting mental stimulation. Mental stimulation is twice as tiring as physical exercise alone. What this will do is when she's working on a brain game or when she's working on an enrichment toy or a slow feeder, she can relax in the crate and her body will biologically start to associate feelings of calm, happy, soothing feelings when she's around the crate. And as you see, I have not once asked her to go in. And this is a puppy, by the way, who's barely six months old, we're fostering her. She's a puppy mill survivor, lived her entire life in a cage. One of the biggest and most common mistakes that I see new puppy parents doing when it comes to crate training and makes it so much harder is only using the crate at night or when you leave. And what the puppy very quickly learns is every time I go into this crate, my family, my owner, my pet parent leaves me or I'm left alone or I'm stuck in here for hours at a time. No wonder so many of us are struggling with crate training. We have not yet made the crate Disneyland. And then that leads me to step two, which is to as we've described, normalize the crate. I don't just use it during nighttime or when I leave in the beginning. I use it throughout the day. And again, that's why I love having these wide side open garage doors and it also opens in the front because it allows me to sit here and relax. We spend a lot of time in this little area where I have this paw brand blanket on the ground. And the reason I have this here is because a lot of puppies will accidentally have accidents right outside their crate in the beginning. And this blanket is completely waterproof. It's also really soft. So in the beginning, when she was too afraid to go in the crate, we would just kind of lay around here on the blanket. And it also has this style, at least, has this kind of raised fabric. And so I'll take some of her treats, or if you're feeding a kibble, you can do this, and I'll hide them in here so she has to sniff and dig and forage it out. When we're sitting here watching TV, we have this open. I'll sit on the floor with her in the beginning, and that way she starts getting used to like, oh, we're always spending time around the crate. This must be a normal, fun, exciting thing. And then as my puppy offers to go in the crate on her own, I reward that with treats, verbal praise, toys, or play, or whatever's motivating to my puppy. We practice crate time, which what I'm doing right now is a practice session at least five times a day. And I know that sounds extreme, but for those of you that have a puppy who's not crate trained, they're crying, they're screaming, they're defecating in the crate, you are at this point willing to do whatever it takes to get them used to being in the crate because you don't want to see them cry or be upset or or be sad. And so these are the things that we do. And it's why I always recommend, if at all possible, when you get a new puppy to take the first week off of work if you can, or split that time with neighbors, friends, family members, pet sitters to where maybe you can take a three day weekend and then have somebody come help during lunch times or multiple breaks throughout the day.
And then people ask, well, what do I do if my puppy cries? Like, what if I put them in the crate and they're crying? So there's a few different tactics for this, but what I have found has worked for me is I really try to avoid that from happening. And I get, it's probably gonna happen at least once or twice. Uh, and the way that I avoid and prevent that is by making the crate Disneyland. What I mean by that is having short little sessions where you're actively engaging with your puppy and giving some kind of positive reinforcement when they choose to go in or at least around the crate in the beginning. Oh my goodness, before we get on to the next thing, I have to do a quick unboxing because Marlowe's Super Chewer and Bark Box just came in the mail and I have to talk about these because I am so passionate about mental stimulation and enrichment for my dogs every single day and this is how I do it so easily. Uh, big shout out to Super Chewer and BarkBox for supporting our mission to save all the damn dogs by sponsoring this part of the video. And what I do is I take some of her treats and I scatter them, or you could do their food, and I scatter them at the bottom of the box. You could really use any box, but the reason I love these is because then I put her toys that come in the box because these are monthly toy subscription boxes. Super Chewer here being toys that are more durable. The theme this month is Halloween. Now she has to dig, sniff, and forage the treats or food out of here, digging under the toys so it's helping to build her confidence. Then we have our more traditional plush toys, which is also which is Bark Box and also the Halloween theme. And look at this toy. Finn is gonna go bonkers because Finn, my dude, is obsessed with balls. So look at this, they call it the brain. And what I love about it is it is a two-part toy. That's what really makes BarkBox and even Super Chewer stand out to me is they have multiple facets and aspects to their toys. So with this, you can actually pull the brain out or the dog can, here we go. And then you could even stuff treats down here, put this in and have your dog work to get it out. I'm gonna be frank, the reason I've continued to get these subscription boxes is because I cannot get over the amazing monthly themes. It's different every month. You can get the toys custom to your dogs, whether you have more gentle chewers or super chewers, you can do it based on their size as well. And I am just as excited, if not more excited, to get these than my dogs are. And then part of that practice session is practicing having the door shut. And the way that I do this is so slow and so gradual in the beginning. I get this is not realistic for everybody, but even if yesterday you had to leave them in the crate and they were crying because you had to go to work or you had to take your kid to school, today, maybe it's Saturday, you can still come back and do a practice session, right? So what I'll do is I'll start with this, right? So you see she notices it. I'm not reacting, not doing anything. And she went back to uh, licking on her groove. Great. And I'll wait here and wait till she's relaxed. So she's going to come out. No big deal. I'm not going to do anything. This is step one of the practice. See how she kind of went back in? Then I'm going to come out and start moving this again. Hold this here. And maybe this is all we do today. I'm waiting for her to see not interested in the fact that I'm closing the crate before I start moving to the next level. Again, slow and gradual, always positive. Then, Bentley, you're gonna have to move your body. I will shut the crate. Again, this is all slow. This could be over several days. Come on, Ben, up. I don't wanna shut it on you. Oh, there we go. Um, then I'll shut it in here, just like so. And what we'll do is in the beginning, I may only shut it for 10 seconds. And I will only open the crate if she's calm, and not crying. And if let's say right now she was screaming, barking, I would just wait for that one millisecond that she stopped and then I would open it. When I open the crate, excuse me, Bentley, they're very excited. When I open the crate, I'm not excited. I'm not acknowledging her, nothing. This right here was a practice session. This probably took me a total of 30 seconds, maybe a minute, and I walk away and we do this again three, four, five more times today. And I will progress to having her in the crate for only a couple minutes at the time, at a time, then we come back and open it. Then we progress and have her in here for 30 minutes. And then I maybe have her in here while I'm taking a shower or watching Netflix or preparing a meal. And what this is doing is this is giving her more practice opportunities to learn that every time I go in the crate, mom or dad, brother or sister is always going to let me out. She needs to have plenty of practice sessions and opportunities and experiences where shutting the crate door always results in opening the crate door. And again, the key is when I open it, I essentially ignore, I don't acknowledge, I don't reward. Um, and I also, here's a pro tip, try to wait to open the door when she's in a calm sitting or down position without me asking for it. So I'll stand by the crate and just kind of wait for it. And this just kind of helps reduce that 
bounding out energy when they come out. And then when we think about crate training, we wanna have the right tools. So first and foremost, the crate that I use is the Dix Crate for all puppies uh, for a variety of reasons. One, it has this garage style uh, door, so I can open it and close it really easily. And this allows me to have a nice side opening, which makes crate training so simple. You can also open it from the front. It has a bed that you can get right inside here to fit snugly that has a washable, removable cover. It also has a bottom tray that you can remove so it's easy to clean. And probably my favorite tool for crate training next to the crate is you can get the Diggs Groove to go with it. I have the frozen treat spread peanut butter on here from Diggs. I simply froze it and then she just licks it. And what's really cool about this is the act of licking for a dog is naturally calming, soothing, and relaxing. So it can truly tremendously help with anxiety, stress, and even boredom. Think about if you've ever seen a dog injure their paw, for example, they start licking it. That's because it's a very soothing behavior. Other thing I love to have are brain game toys like this. Again, I always supervise the use of these in and around the crate, but it makes a world of difference to have these positive associations when they're around it. In addition to that are nanny cams. So if I am gonna be away, I like to have a nanny cam. The one I'm using and loving right now is the Furbo 360. It's fantastic because it will actually alert you if your puppy's moving around, barking, if they're changing in their movement behavior. And the coolest part is it can alert you if there's any security issues, a person present, uh, if there's smoke, CO2, glass breaking. It's pretty incredible and it moves 360 degrees. So I'm a big fan of that. And then at this point, people say, okay, crate makes sense. Now what about puppy biting? How do I stop the crazy puppy biting? So if you click the video right here, we'll jump over there and we'll go over that together and how we stop that quickly. Or if you wanna learn about my potty training process that has helped millions of pet parents, Click the video here and don't forget to click that subscribe button. I hope you have a beautiful day. Bye.